While we can dream of hundreds of thrilling scenarios for Starship once it's fully operational, it's important to acknowledge that SpaceX still has a long road ahead. Successfully catching the Super Heavy booster marks a major milestone, but it's only one small piece of the bigger Starship puzzle. So what are the next steps? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech, and thanks for being here with us. Moving toward the future, one key step SpaceX is expected to take is the in-space engine relight for Starship. For those who might not recall, during Starship's third test launch, SpaceX's top team had planned to perform an engine relight in space. However, that attempt got ultimately skipped, possibly due to the second stage's instability during re-entry. Since then, across the fourth and fifth test flights, SpaceX has not revisited this maneuver, continuing instead to guide Starship's second stage along a short trajectory toward the Indian Ocean. But SpaceX's ultimate goal isn't limited to just a single, simple trajectory, right? Many intricate in-space operations will require Starship's ability to relight its engines. The capability to relight in space will enable Starship to conduct complex orbital maneuvers and dock with other spacecraft critical for missions involving rendezvous or in-flight course corrections. Without this capability, Starship's scope for diverse orbital operations could be quite limited. Additionally, relighting engines mid-flight offers flexibility to manage unexpected situations or off-nominal events during launch and ascent. Should an issue arise early in the flight, the vehicle could attempt to abort and return to Earth via engine relighting. Moreover, the ability to relight Starship's engines is essential for in-space transport and refueling operations. The vehicle may need to perform multiple burns to transfer payloads to various orbits or reach escape velocity for deep space missions. Reliable engine relights are indispensable for achieving these complex maneuvers. Given all this, the next flights, Starship Flight 6 and 7, are ideal opportunities to make a fresh attempt at this critical maneuver. SpaceX seems to have this goal in sight, as demonstrated with their recent Raptor tests, where 34 of them got relit in a span of 10 minutes at their Texas facility. Once this effort succeeds, Starship will enable SpaceX to start orbital flights with Starship, potentially paving way for Starlink launches as early as the first half of next year. These will involve bigger Starlink satellites, designed to fit within Starship's higher payload capacity, and will provide direct mobile internet capability. For Flight 6, SpaceX has prepped Starship's upper stage, known as Ship 31, and recently transported the Super Heavy Booster, that's Booster 13, to the launch site for static fire tests. In terms of hardware and regulatory readiness, a test flight in November seems entirely possible. SpaceX's next major milestone will be successfully landing the Starship upper stage. To date, every test re-entry of Starship has ended in burning up or explosion. Only once SpaceX masters catching the Super Heavy booster mid-air will they begin serious effort to land Starship second stage back on solid ground. And here, important to note, this means just landing Starship on land, not yet catching it. Unlike Super Heavy, which could either be caught or redirected to the ocean, Starship has just one option, successful landing. As a result, catching Starship will be a bit riskier than catching Super Heavy, as any error could lead to big-time hazards. Experts suggest that SpaceX may initially aim to land Starship on solid ground at an alternate location to refine the complex operation. While we saw impressive accuracy from Ship 30 in Flight 5, which landed precisely in the ocean as shown on nearby cameras, this isn't enough for SpaceX. They can't compromise public safety for their rocket program. To prepare for the eventual catching process, SpaceX might first conduct landings on isolated landings, with rumors circulating that they scouted the Johnson Atoll in the Pacific earlier this year. Such remote locations would offer safer options for returning Starship to solid ground. However, Starship currently lacks landing legs, which would be essential for lunar or Martian landings. So the question remains, will SpaceX fast-track landing leg development now, or will they instead work through regulatory hurdles to catch Starship in South Texas? Following a successful catch of both Starship stages, the next crucial step for SpaceX is going to be in-orbit refueling, a mission-critical goal they have to accomplish by fall of next year to enable lunar missions. Though this milestone is eagerly anticipated, much groundwork needs to be laid before any orbit refueling test can happen. For the fuel transfer demonstration, SpaceX will first launch a target starship into low Earth orbit. A chaser starship then follows to rendezvous with this target in space. When the two crafts meet, the chaser vehicle transfers a substantial amount of cryogenic propellant to the target. Finally, the two vehicles will separate, with each executing its own orbital burn. To pull off this demonstration, SpaceX needs to complete several key preparations. They'll need to construct a second launch tower in South Texas for the chaser's launch, as well as develop and test quick disconnect docking mechanisms, navigation sensors, and hot gas thrusters. Despite pushing ahead with these preparations, 
SpaceX has yet to announce a specific date for this test, though insiders indicate it may happen next year, meaning we'll likely have to wait another year to witness this milestone. Regardless of the outcome, SpaceX will likely conduct further rounds of testing to refine the process. And after that, what's next for SpaceX? How about reusing the booster for the first time? Some may say it's unlikely given SpaceX took over 15 months to reuse the Falcon 9 booster after its first landing in December 2015, finally achieving this in March of 2017. Not to mention Super Heavy is a bit bigger and more complex than Falcon 9. Furthermore, the B-12 booster, recovered from a previous flight, is now on display at the Rocket Garden. Now, that may be true, but we're talking about a new booster, one likely to be spotted in the coming months and quite possibly flown for a second time. Engineers are already gathering immensely valuable data on the vehicle's performance and hardware endurance. Following this month's booster launch, Elon commented on social media, good chance that Starship achieves full-stack reusability in 2025, critical breakthrough needed to make life multiplanetary. This suggests that SpaceX aims to relaunch both the booster and the upper stage early next year, though the timeline seems optimistic, especially for Starship's upper stage. We can hope that SpaceX will soon achieve success for their spacecraft after extensive testing. At this stage, Starship is now considered to be operating stably, and it should soon be ready to prepare for larger missions, such as a lunar landing under NASA's contract. To accomplish this, SpaceX must conduct an extended-duration Starship flight. The spacecraft needs to be capable of maintaining independent operations for up to 100 days while awaiting the arrival of the Orion crew vehicle. This will require complex systems to keep liquid propellants at extremely low temperatures and to ensure all systems are stable over extended periods. Development progress on the project has been delayed by about three years from the initial target set for 2021, reflecting challenges that engineers have to solve. However, SpaceX continues to make notable advancements in Starship's development and testing. Automation capability is also essential for Starship as the spacecraft has to be able to autonomously adjust its orbit, maintain life support systems, and perform complex maneuvers without direct crew intervention. This demands sophisticated control algorithms and highly reliable computer systems. NASA and SpaceX are working closely together to finalize the lunar variant of Starship. Lessons from test flights will be applied to improve the spacecraft's performance and reliability. This collaboration represents a new model in space exploration, combining the expertise of a government space agency with the flexibility and innovation of the private sector. And by mid-2027, Starship will be expected to make an uncrewed landing on the moon, followed by a return to orbit. This test will be critical for Starship to prove itself before carrying a crew to the lunar surface. One of the most significant challenges in Starship's lunar missions involves landing terrain requirements. Unlike previous lunar landers, Starship is a bit bigger and requires extremely precise landing site selection. The moon's surface at the landing site must have a slope of no more than 1.5 degrees from an ideal plane to ensure the spacecraft remains balanced during landing. During this test flight, Starship will not only demonstrate landing capability, but also test its cargo transfer system. A critical part of the mission is verifying the elevator system, which will be used to transport astronauts from the spacecraft to the lunar surface in future missions. The mission's critical phase will be the moon takeoff. This unprecedented challenge arises from Starship's use of an entirely different fuel system compared to Apollo landers. While Apollo relied on hypergolic propellants, which can be stored at normal temperatures, aerozyne 50 and nitrogen tetroxide, Side, Starship uses methane and liquid oxygen, requiring extremely low storage temperatures. Takeoff is further complicated by the fact that Starship must accomplish this without any supportive infrastructure on the moon's surface, no launch tower fueling systems, or auxiliary equipment. This will be the ultimate test to determine whether Starship is truly suitable as a lunar landing vehicle. The results of this test flight will be pivotal. NASA and SpaceX will thoroughly analyze every aspect of the mission, from system performance to operational reliability. If significant issues are identified, they may conduct additional test flights before proceeding with Artemis III, the mission to put astronauts on the moon. If all goes well, NASA may fulfill its original Artemis program goal of landing two astronauts on the moon in 2028. This target is two years behind NASA's current goal of 2026, yet remains an ambitious task for both SpaceX and NASA. However, if obstacles arise, such as a failed catch tower or issues with in-space refueling, the program could get delayed even further. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.